Hello and welcome to Money 2020 Hindsight, the least you know to know in fintech today. I'm Nick Holland and I'm joined today by my colleague Ian Horn and Jason Mikula, our special guest. So um, we're going to dedicate today's show to this bit of news. Uh, we're talking about, oh, you can't see it there. Um, banks uh, plan payment wallets to compete with PayPal and Apple Pay, says the Wall Street Journal. So uh, there's been a lot of uh, posts on LinkedIn about this from the usual suspects, um, pointing to you, Mr. Shevlin, for example. But there's a lot of obviously conjecture and opinion about this. And a lot of a lot kind of points to it as sort of deja vu all over again. I think you know, we've obviously seen uh chase pay go the way of the dodo in in recent years uh way back mcx which was a retailer consortium tried something similar again that imploded so i guess we want to sort of unpack here a little bit is why this why now and what's in it for well anyone really um so uh ian just a quick uh insight from you then in terms of why do you think they're doing this right now yeah, I think it's a, a long term play around customer loyalty, no doubt, seeing people use things like Apple Pay, for instance, to pay for items on an everyday basis. But to, to speak to your point, I think why is 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 really crucial beyond that. I, I can't see much of a why for the customer. I can't see how anyone particularly wins out of this immediately. I mean, again, a longer term move, perhaps. But yeah. I I, I'm, I'm asking myself more questions than I'm getting answers, Nick. So I think, Jason, I'm delighted you're here. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the first thing I want to go I, through is... is Jason, is, how over, is over to you, mate, before I sort of get into my own rant, but it's, it's on you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. I, I, I think Deja Vu is is right. I was reading an old Bloomberg article that Chase Pay was launched at Money 2020 in 2015 and oh, was we, killed we off in 2020. 2020. You know that we work for the money, 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 twenty twenty. So okay, we do that. <laughs> uh, and killed it off uh, in twenty twenty one. And at its peak, less than one percent of online merchants accepted Chase Pay. Mm. So hardly a uh, resounding success that they were probably looking for. I mean, I think the the problem that uh, Chase is trying to solve is a Chase problem. It's not a customer problem, right? Chase is afraid of being disintermediated by Apple Pay, Cash App, PayPal. Um, you know, it's not like this came out of nowhere, right? Like right. Apple Pay launched around the same time that Chase sort of cooked up their original version of this uh, in the mid 2010s. So, so it's not like you know Chase has been completely caught off guard. Um, you know, I think the the question which no one has been able to come up with a, a reasonable hypothesis is like, what is the benefit to an end user of you know yet another wallet? Yeah, and I haven't heard anyone come up with a reasonable like hypothesis of what you know what could a network of banks, whether it's through early warning or I've heard it maybe through a, a different uh, partnership, what is it that they can offer to end consumers that they don't already have somewhere else? Right. I mean, I, I don't find credit cards online that cumbersome. Um, I mean, yes, sometimes you have to type in a 16-digit number or whatever, but th there's ways they could have alleviated that anyway. I mean, one of my concerns is it's just it's kind of death by a thousand checkouts at this point. It's just one more checkout. And presumably, it's not going to be, you know, a Wells Fargo pay or a Bank of America pay. It's going to be whatever they call it. Let's call it Zelle pay for now. Uh, that, that's just less, you know, another step of disintermediation or disassociation from their brand in the first place. So it's, you know, there's, there's just one more brand out there that consumers won't know as a bank. So it, it seems a little redundant from that standpoint. I, I mean, uh, from the consumer standpoint, I mean, that that's that's one angle because obviously you need to get them to buy into it. I think, you know, clearly I'd say there are a few years late, as in maybe a dozen uh, in terms of obviously the penetration of PayPal and Apple Pay in the US. But I mean, there's what's in it for the merchants here? Um, uh, Ian, how are you? I mean, I honestly am, am yet to figure it out. And I understand that Zelle is being used more by, you know, tradespeople and being used for larger payments. So now that be, that being used for day to day things, I'm I'm not entirely sure. I, I honestly don't know. And, and and again, I'd welcome your thoughts. I mean, Nick, I was expecting a rant from you earlier. I was promised a rant. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly can't tell you. I think just like the customer problem, I'm not. I'm I'm yet to figure out what's really in it for well, the merchants. I mean, um, presumably, I, presumably, I mean, yeah, what's the strength here? Yeah. Looking at verifications or potentially identity security, possibly. I don't know beyond that. Yeah, it it just. I mean, you know, it's, it's not as, I mean, merchants really care about a couple of things, right? They, well, I care about one thing, which is the cheapest possible transactions. And if this is just using 
existing cards, presumably there's no cut on interchange or anything. I mean, Jason, what do you think? I mean, is, is what what is a merchant advantage to this, if anything? Yeah, I mean, uh, merchants clearly are not opposed to new payment forms. I mean, that the explosion of Klarna and BNPL demonstrates that, but those offered a real benefit, at least in theory, of higher conversion rates and higher order values. <laughs> whether that's more, whether that's more not in practice, it's not yeah, the go there. can of words. Um, but anyway, all right, there. different show. Yeah. Um, but in this case, from from what we know now, it does sound like the distribution point is through merchants, but it's not clear why merchants would adopt this, right? In my mind, you know, those are the questions. Is it cheaper? And, you know, big banks are, particularly American big banks, are loath to give up their interchange cash cow. So they don't want to do anything that's going to displace credit card and debit card for some other type of payment, whether it's account to account, Zelle, whatever. And there's really no reason right now to believe that it would increase merchant conversion rate because it's yet another wallet that customers are going to have to sign up for. And, and that's it as well. It's, it's just one more, as I said, death by a thousand checkouts. It's, there's just too many of them. And again, there's, there's no there's no penetration. Well, it's zero penetration. I mean, obviously, we're talking about you know two pages from the Wall Street Journal on Monday. There's a lot of details to be fleshed out in that. But it's, it does seem pretty unusual for them to be doing this at this late in the game without really any sort of benefits to the people who need to buy into it. weird stuff anyway um ian any other thoughts you have on this i mean it's a, a kind of wonder as well i mean is apple really that much of a threat i mean I, we mickey and i spoke about this last week i don't think that they're the boogeyman that people think they are i mean obviously you know, the Goldman Sachs write-offs of a billion since 2020 on the Apple card, you know, say that it's not that profitable to be working with them. So, I mean, it's, I just see Apple as the connective tissue. I mean, it's it's obviously they get the brand association at point of sale, but they don't really care about the payments as much. Yeah, that was my take really as well. I, I kind of think where Apple add value here for the customer is is a simplicity. It's being able to just use your phone. Like that That is pretty much it. And I feel like you've got this group now trying to replicate the wallet, but the wallet's not really the issue. It's the simplicity. It's the access. It's the well, NFC payment. Well, right? and, and here goes, that's the other thing as well. If Apple just says, sorry, you're not accessing, you know, the, the NFC antenna or the NFC, you know, the, the sort of secure element, <laughs> it can't be on iPhones. So, um, yeah. I, you know, yeah, because that's it. I mean, are we going to load another app onto our phones and then you get to the checkout? And rather than being use my card, I'll get my phone out, I'll load the app, I'll do that. At what point have we just lost convenience there? I, I'm, I'm a bit baffled by that. Anyway, yeah, well, again, well, uh, unless unless there's a specific reason for the user to do it, and I hate to be like the guy trotting out the Starbucks example again, but like people will do it because there's a reward attached to it. So they'll load money, they'll hold that QR code at the register. You know, Walmart kind of has tried to do that, I would argue not terribly successfully, like uh, Chase and big banks from the Wall Street Journal reporting are starting specifically online, presumably because there are a lot of barriers, yeah. particularly as far as Apple and using components of the OS, NFC chip, et cetera. Um, but yeah, you're right. The, the more barriers you introduce, if you don't give somebody a reason to do it, they're not going to do it. All right. So we've got a minute left. Final thoughts. Um... Is there any hope for this, Ian? Um, is there any hope for it? I think actually what Jason said there about incentivizing and loyalty and reward type schemes, maybe there's an angle in that. But right now, I, I think they're looking for a reason why it might work. So I'm I'm not optimistic right now, but who knows? Um, and Jason, final thoughts? I mean, I, I would say big banks have enough money that they can afford to hedge. They can put money here, and if it blows up and it doesn't work out, like, you know, uh, they're covering their risks <laughs> okay fine it, it's 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 interesting i guess we'll just see how this plays out well gentlemen uh jason thanks for being a special guest from the netherlands um ian thank you for being uh, from your closet in london appreciate you <laughs> thank you and and for um the the u.s contingent it's like an accent exchange here i'm nick holland with money 2020 um see you soon bye for now